I think I want one, but I'm going to have to work a bit harder, I think. Okay, time is very, very limited, but I'm going to take a few questions. Any questions? <laughs> um, I'm unlucky. I mean, I, I, it was great to hear um, you have the best job in the world because I, as a designer, I probably do have one of the best jobs in the world, and I, I, I'm spoiled. I get to choose um, any of our products, apart from the 177. Current, tonight, I have a Vanquish. So. If you're an executive assistant, I'm available next week, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? Uh, here's one for me then, uh, for, for all the panel actually. I mean, social media is becoming very, very important. Um, how, how, do luxury, how does the luxury industry deal with this new phenomenon? Because this is all about a wider communication. It's very, very democratic, but luxury is very exclusive by, by nature. So how do you take this new medium and, um, and tweak it so you, you still retain that exclusivity and luxury uh, in your brands? So perhaps we could start with Guillaume. French, so <laughs> you know how I would give first you the Oh, okay. A very gallant of you. Well, no, we, we, we just heard about being cool, and I think um, a luxury brand today obviously has to appeal, it has to be cool, and I think the associations that you get connected with social media. We had a recent incident which was actually quite funny. We had a very elaborate and quite expensive necklace that was on display in Harrods. And um, one of the um, ladies, actually, I think she was from the Middle East, went by and requested if she could try it on. And the sales staff said, yes, absolutely, fine. And obviously she tried it on and said, can I have a picture of it? Can I get my friend to take a picture? And everything, OK, as long as she doesn't run away with it, fine. And um, eventually she just pressed it onto her Instagram. And I think 30 minutes later, there were almost 7,000 likes. <laughs> so it's a very good way to spread the message. And I think it's inev inevitable today. And actually, you know, to see some of our jewels ending up on these Pinterest walls, fantastic. Um, so yeah, I think we can't live without it. Mm -hmm. so. No, I, I would totally agree as well. And um, it's very much about Yes, we are rare, exclusive brands, but, but the inclusivity is the fact that the brand is recognized. And the last thing any luxury brand would want to do is, is turn off anyone who is a potential aspirant. So the brand has to be cool. It has to be um, associated with things that are cool, with, with the media that we have, the instant media that we have. But you know, the way you protect your brand is that Everything that you do as the company, you're aware of that um, and you understand that. But you have to work with that media. You have to work with the assets and the tools that we have around us. Right, to, to just add on, uh, on what has been said already, uh, you know, I guess it's, not, it's beyond luxury because in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in the market, social media is everywhere. Uh, it's growing, it's, uh, it's a marketing tool extremely important to activate the brand. Uh, I think probably what is uh, unique for such luxury brand when I see as well, you know, the, the details, uh, 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 what is Fabergé or Aston Martins, uh, uh, even us at Godiva, if I bring a chef, he will tell you, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, how we create a praline, etc. Uh, is how do we use social media for us as a luxury brand to uh, bring content and to bring the experience? Because it's always it's very easy to use Facebook and, and Pinterest and etc. But us as luxury, we need to step up and really bring uh, more content uh, and, and story behind everything. I'll take a couple of quick questions. Lady over there. Hi, my name's Janavi Dadaka. Um, one of the things that came out from all three of you is um, history and heritage. So is there any hope for newcomers and new brands to ever become luxury brands like yourself? Well, I think, I think um, heritage, let's say, if we speak of heritage in form of authenticity, and I think authenticity and integrity, in our case, there is heritage, but it's not necessary to have this rich heritage as long as you have authenticity, integrity, and um, you, you, you look for skilled workmanship and, and you apply attention to detail. 
And I think, above all, it's passion. It's passion. An injection of passion in whatever it is will create demand. And um, people like to, like to understand the story, as we were saying before. It needs a story. Uh, whether that's a new story or an old story is in many ways irrelevant, I think. Um, sometimes the heritage can be a lead weight around your neck. I mean, in our case, I think we're quite happy with our heritage. Um, but obviously, heritage can often mean restructurization, just re-educating. Re I mean, for many years, the heritage of Fabergé was not cool, as we saw. And I've got the living proof in my office. It's a big Barbie doll in a plastic case who's holding a Fabergé egg little bag. And, um, you know, to make it cool is to bring the story alive. Yeah, no, absolutely. 100% agree. It's, it is honesty, authenticity, truth to the brand's meaning, and if, if you create a new brand, I mean, is, is this brand a luxury brand? I mean, they're not very old. They started pretty badly as well. Um, in fact, I wish I'd have bought a lot of shares at the price they were at many years ago. Um, but, and it's the same for our brand. In, in 100 years, we've, we've um, gone bankrupt, I think, seven times. So there is always um, a, a, a legacy, if you like, um, to, to your heritage, your history. And, and I think if you stick to what the brand is, is for and, and how you present that and it's honest and it's authentic and, and it's truthful, then you can create a luxury brand. Yeah. You, you have probably noticed even at, uh, in brands such as Godiva, when I mention uh, our brand positioning, we say uh, brand positioning is to own the ultimate chocolate experience and we say set the gold standards since so called since uh, 1926, but it's 1926 is not the only hook. It set the gold standard in everything we do. Uh, and, and such luxury brands uh, we are, uh, it's also extremely important for us to innovate all the time. Mm. Uh, and I don't want to create the buzz already, but uh, for next Saint Valentine, you know, we, we have the create, uh, uh, you know, an entire collection from the chocolate and the gifting box uh, with Valérie Lété, who is a French designer. Uh, and, and we did that this year with Jaime Ayon, who is a Spanish designer. And so we have to also, you know, innovate all the time. We can't just uh, uh, use the uh, heritage. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're up against the clock. I think you'll agree with me, we've uh, seen three fascinating presentations and uh, tried to have a debate, but uh, time has beaten us. Uh, let's give a very warm round of applause, please, for three fantastic speakers.